Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about how you use something like this. This is a multimeter and it is one of those essential little bits of kit that if you're going to be in the hobby or any kind of electronics actually you'll find absolutely invaluable. Now in this video although I'm going to talk about the multimeter and what all the symbols mean and how you do the basics like measure resistance voltage and current uh, before you watch this, if you haven't already watched it or don't understand the principles of Ohm's law or how voltage, current and resistance are all related together, then go and watch this video. In fact, I'm going to create a little playlist with all of these kind of electronics basics in. So if you're trying to get your head around how all this works, you'll have one place to have a look. But this video is all about this little fella. I've got quite a few friends who've bought these because they've seen me use them and then get stuck because there is a video on how you use these. Now, in the very basic way you can use them is just to do things like resistance testing, and making sure that there's no dead shorts on anything that you've wired up before you plug the battery in for the first time. I use this a lot for that. But when you're doing a little project or you're putting something together uh, and you're not sure about how something works, it's worth its weight in gold. I can't count the number of times that someone will come on places like YouTube or somewhere else and ask me a question about a problem they've got. And I'll ask them something like, well, are you sure the, the system's getting the correct voltage? And the answer is, I don't know. How do I check? Well, hopefully after you've watched this video, you'll know how. Couple of points of order before we get too far into this. Always treat electricity with respect. Now, the kind of voltages that you're going to be running in a radio controlled circuit are not huge, but they can still uh, cause problems. Things could get very hot, you could burn yourself, or potentially give yourself a little electric shock. So whenever a system or a circuit is live, there's current flowing around it, uh, there's voltage applied, then treat it with respect. Now, multimeters are relatively inexpensive now. You know, the high-end fluke models and things like that can cost an awful lot of money. But something like this, which is relatively inexpensive, um, I'll put a link down below if you're interested in this particular one. I don't have any particular axe to grind. I've had two or three of them. Uh, the reason I changed my last one is it stopped beeping on a continuity setting. I'll talk about what that is in a minute. Uh, that's a great way to make sure that you have wired up things the way you think you actually have. But uh, they, you don't have to spend a lot of money these days, 20, 30 pounds tops, to get a multimeter that will do the basics for you and actually work really well on a bench for basic electronics and building. The reason it's called a multimeter is it can actually measure an awful lot of things. So on this one, you can see all these different symbols all around here. Again, I'll go through what those are in a second, but it'll measure voltage, current, uh, frequency, both AC, DC, it'll measure resistance. Uh, it'll also test diodes, all kinds of stuff. And it's all within this, but there are a, a number of connections at the bottom. So you need to have them connected in the right way for whatever it is you're gonna measure. So before we get too far into this, let me go through what all the symbols are uh, and then show you how you use this in anger. So the first thing we'll look at is the voltage measurement. Now on this particular multimeter, these are all on the left hand side. And again, if you're not sure about the difference between volts and voltage, current and amps and resistance and ohms, then check out the link in the description that explains the relationship and what all those three things are in very simplistic terms. So hopefully you'll be able to understand this one. We're going to focus on how you measure those things. So the first thing we're going to look at here then is the voltage selector. The voltage, the first one we'll look at is DC volts. Direct current or DC volts is what you get out of a battery and is very heavily used in lots of places in electronics and radio control. Now this is one of those settings that I use an awful lot in the hobby just to see exactly how much voltage is getting to a component either when I'm setting up or when I'm troubleshooting. Next setting on here is voltage for AC current. Uh, you know it's slightly different because it has the wavy line underneath and that will allow me to measure the voltage in places where the voltage is actually changing like a sine wave like it does in the main supply. Now the interesting thing is it's not showing you the maximum voltage it's reading, it's showing you the RMS voltage. So in the UK here the mains voltage is about 240 volts. It actually goes up as high around 315 volts but that's at the peak of the cycle. So the RMS value is 240. So you have to make sure that if you're measuring AC volts that you have it selected on this position 
and if you're measuring DC volts, you have it selected on the other one. If you don't, you're going to get some very erroneous readings. Next one is millivolts, they're thousandth of a volt, and that is also for DC as well. It's got the same symbol underneath it, that solid line with a dashed line underneath. Now, the reason that you tend to have multiple positions on something like a multimeter for the same thing, and we can see it on the other side with the milliamps and the 10 amp setting, is that it is about the resolution of the screen. So if you're going to be measuring very small voltages, this is the one that you want it on. Now, some multimeters have like a range selector. This has um, an auto range selector, so it will try and give me uh, the best view and with the most accurate detail of whatever thing I'm looking at. Older ones used to have like a 0 to 2, uh, a 2 to 20, a 2200 voltage selection. Uh, but modern ones tend to only have a couple of settings like this. Really expensive ones just have one setting and it kind of works all out itself. Other side then is going to be measuring current. So this is uh, useful for measuring both DC and AC current. You can see by the symbols underneath that where it says 10 amps and it's going to be for measuring current. There's usually some kind of little fuse inside here uh, that will uh, stop it getting damaged if you exceed 10 amps. And you also have to use a different connector at the bottom of a multimeter like this. Uh, I'll come on to that in a minute. I don't tend to use this one very often because uh, 10 amps isn't enough for me to measure the kind of current flowing into something like a speed controller these days. So it's just not one of those that I use a lot. By the side of that is the milliamp side. Again, this is a milliamp or a thousandth of an amp. Allows you to get much more detailed uh, measurement if you're looking at very, very small amounts of current. We'll use this one in the examples in a minute. And then the last couple of wacky ones, we have a Hertz setting on here. Uh, that's because this multimeter acts as a very simple oscilloscope. It's not a particularly great function on this, I'll be honest. Uh, if I was going to measure frequency, I'd use something like a proper oscilloscope, but that functionality is there. Hertz is just measuring the frequency of something like an AC voltage. So, for example, main supply is typically 50 or 60 Hertz, in the, depending on where you live in the world. Last couple then, we've got the multifunction one. Uh, this allows me to measure resistance. Again, we're going to do that in a minute. I'll show you how to use that. There's also a continuity tester, which will make a beeping noise if there's a short circuit between the two leads in the multimeter. That's good for checking that a wire is actually connected at both ends and that there isn't a break in the middle of the wire. Lots of other useful functions as well. There's a diode tester in here. A diode in an electronic circuit is like a one-way valve in uh, plumbing, so it allow electrical current to flow in one direction but not the other. You can test that that is still how it works using this setting. And there's also a setting for capacitance as well. Capacitors on electrical circuits tend to look like little M&Ms or Smarties, or they look like little round towers. They store electrical charge and they very regularly go bad, particularly older style ones. Uh, so this is a way that you can just check the capacitance of an old capacitor. And then the very last one, MF, that's actually to check the capacitance of larger capacitors in a similar way. But the ones that I use on here are going to be on a daily basis. The voltage one is used a lot and the resistance one is used a lot with the current occasionally being used. So let me give you some practical demos of how I actually test voltage, current and resistance in a simple electrical circuit. But before I get into that, let me just very quick talk about the connections at the bottom. Uh, always read the manual for the multimeter that you have. On this relatively inexpensive one, we have the COM at the right hand side. That's the common, that's always going to be used. The other lead, if I'm measuring voltage, resistance or capacitance, is going to go into the red one by the side of COM. And then the other two are there for measuring current, uh, although you also use the one that's set for milliamp, that's that, that yellow color, for measuring uh, on the MF scale, which if you remember was measuring capacitance. Now, it seems really complicated to have lots of inputs at the bottom and really expensive multimeters might not. But this one has, and there's a very good reason for that. You want a really high resistance when you're measuring 
things like voltage, resistance and capacitance between the COM port and the other lead. And that's because when you're measuring voltage, you don't want lots of current to be flowing through the meter and affect the reading. However, if you're measuring current, and again, I'll show this all in a second, uh, then you want the internal resistance of the meter to be as low as you possibly can get it. Because what you don't want to do is impede the current that's actually flowing around the circuit that you're trying to measure. So that's why you've got the two sides. One has a really high internal resistance inside the meter itself. The other one has a really low resistance. Again, that's usually covered in the manual. And if you're ever not sure, it'll show you where you need to plug everything in. So let's do the first bit of measurements. Let's measure resistance. Now, here's a little circuit, and I'll, it's actually going to mirror what I've put together on the bench in a second. We have a simple battery, we have a little resistor, and then we have a little LED. And when we connect the battery up, the LED is going to come on. Fantastic. Now, to measure resistance, what we're going to do is we need to select the resistance setting which is the ohm symbol which is what looks like the bandy legs of a stick man and then we're going to connect the leads to either side of the resistor and that is going to give us the answer so here we are on the bench there's that little circuit that uh, was just drawn a little led with a little resistor in the middle and it's connected onto a power supply i'm just going to plug this into a little 12 volt battery and we'll measure the resistance again you can see the leads are plugged in exactly as we said black into the com and the other one into the voltage resistance capacitance so as it turns on it's going to read an ol or an open line which means it's reading a super high resistance which it should be it's reading the resistance of the air this should be a 470 and it's 461 uh, ohms uh, or 0.462 kilo ohms which is actually 462 ohms so it's pretty close and all resistors have a tolerance so you'll find that that's the case so back to the slides next one let's do a simple voltage measurement and we'll actually measure the voltage of the battery so with the battery disconnected to everything else let's just plug the leads onto there onto the positive lead is going to go to the plus side of the battery the com lead is going to go to the negative side of the battery and that is going to show us the voltage that the battery has so again on the bench uh, using slightly different leads but plugging into the same place we have the com port and again i'm plugging the lead into the voltage resistance capacitance side because we want a really high resistance so we're going to put it on dc volts and it will auto range down to a very low voltage and then what we need to do is to get the probes and we need to stick them the, the red probe positive probe onto the positive and the com probe onto the negative and there we are we're reading 16.73 volts if it was a minus number minus 16.73 that probably means that i've connected the leads the wrong way around it won't hurt anything you'll just get a negative number back to the slides next one then is how to measure voltage so let's look at a slightly more sophisticated way of doing it again the multimeter is going to be set up in exactly the same way but you can measure the voltage drop across the individual components inside a circuit while the circuit is running and while the circuit's live and current is flowing so let's assume that we have a 12 volt battery the led typically lights up from anything from 1.8 to 3 volts really depends on the led uh, so we need to drop the rest of the voltage across the resistor and we can actually see that in real time by using our multimeter so again this time i'm going to power the circuit so it's lit up so there's the led all lit up and working so there's current flowing through all the wires uh, so what i'm going to do while it's set on voltage and um, let's just test the battery voltage and confirm that so i can clip the leads on either side of the battery that's going to show us the full battery voltage so it's 12.27 volts for the battery if then we put it either side of the led we can see that the led is actually getting 3.1 volts which means the rest of the voltage should be dropped across the resistor and 9.16 so if you add that with the voltage that's been dropped by the led then you get the battery voltage which is kind of what we expected to see but that does mean that you can measure voltage in a live 
circuit like this and make sure that everything is working. Last thing what I'll show you then is how you measure current. Now current is a little bit different. Rather than you can kind of piggyback on stuff and look at the voltage dropped across individual components or across individual parts of the circuit, with current you want the current to actually flow through the meter. So we're going to connect it up in a slightly different way. So what we're going to have to do is connect the leads so that the circuit actually goes through the multimeter and out the other side. So let's go to the bench and I'll show you that. So this time the black lead is in the comp and the red lead is in the milliamp. I've got it set to the milliamp setting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up the leads to, uh, to complete the circuit. So I'm going to put the red wire to the positive side of the battery and the black wire to the negative side. And now the current is still flowing around the circuit as it did before, but this time it's going through the meter. And I can see that it's put about 19.7 odd milliamps is flowing through the circuit. And that's exactly what I'd expect. An LED uh, for brightness pulls about 20 milliamps. So there we are. That's how you use a multimeter. That's what all the symbols mean. And that's how you connect it into a circuit to measure voltage, resistance, and how you also measure current. Again, check out the other videos in the series. Link in the description. If you have any questions, pop them down below. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the Inner Circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.